Good afternoon, everyone. This next session will be about Blue Core Takeover, highlights of its success story. I'm Joseph Ford, manager of customer success here at Blue Core, and I'll be moderating this next session. If you happen to have any thoughts or contributions to the conversations, or if you have any questions, we have a lot of time towards the end to make sure that we address them. Uh, without further ado, I do want to announce my guest today is an innovative and passionate marketing executive with a strong track record of driving program expansion as well as revenue growth. Please join me in welcoming Anne-Marie Resnick to the stand. Thank you. I think that really just means I'm old and I've been around a really long time. So um, thank you, and um, thanks for sitting in on this session. I have, um, first of all, a show of hands. How many people have ever heard of Hamaker Schlemmer? OK, not bad. By the end of this, you will know it very well, and you'll even stop on the store on East 57th Street and make a purchase before you head back. <laughs> OK, so I am, I've been with the company about mm, 19, 19, 20 months, something like that. There's two ladies that will raise their hands, Kira and Chris, and they are on my team, on my marketing team, email and social marketing team. So they will keep me honest. If there's anything I say that is not exactly how they, because they actually do all the work. So I uh, oversee all the catalog marketing, all the internet marketing, all the analytics, the creative team, the email team, and the New York City store. So I oversee a lot, which means I don't do a lot which means they do a lot. So in case there's something you really, really want to know, talk to them after, because they'll give you the, the full scoop. But um, we did just, I want to say just this past June, we went 100% Blue Core. So we had been working with Blue Core for a couple of years on our triggered, and then we just went forward 100%. And I think we'll get into how all that happened in all of the questions, because yep. it's a good story. Yeah, first, if we just kind of take a step back, what has been important to you personally in your own career? Well, for me, because I have had a long career, I, I've been in direct marketing my entire life. I literally started, don't anybody do the math, a long time ago when, when Avon Fashions was a big cosmetic company and they had some catalogs. So I've been involved in just sort of direct to consumer for many, many years. But um, over the years, I, what was important was that always a good relationship with the customer and where is the customer. So of course we had to make sure, in my career, I made sure my career path took me to online and took me to digital and took me to places where I knew my customer was living. And I, um, my last, right before I went to Hamaker, I was about 12 years at Scholastic, which is children's publishing, is very, very different than, um, than where I am at Hamaker. But, it, but I have to say that the truths of the business and sort of having a good relationship with your customer, knowing your customer's needs, knowing where your customer lives, knowing when your customer is ready to buy, all the things I'm sure all of you are dealing with, I don't think that goes away with any uh, business that you're in. What makes Hamaker a little bit different is that Hamaker is literally 171 years old. So that comes with a lot of good, good legacy, good you know, branding, and then it comes with half of you not raising your hand because you don't know who we are. So we have a lot of work to do as we are sort of getting Hamaker back into the forefront. Hamaker was always known for really um, innovative product. We had the first coffee maker. We had the first telephone answering machine, all kinds of things like that. And then we sort of weren't the first in too many things. But we never went out of business, which is a good thing. But we didn't keep our systems up to date. We didn't keep our, you know, our database up to date. So now we're you know, ebb and flows of an aging customer of an aging company, excuse me. So now we're, we've got a lot of new people in place and we're getting sort of going back, picking up the old bootstraps and making sure the company is you know, living up to its legacy, but also very current as well. Uh, internally, how do you align on success metrics for your marketing program? And is this something that you share directly with any of your vendors? Well, when I first got to Hamaker, we had a whole slew of vendors. And the reason why we have a whole slew of vendors is because the number of people that work on the marketing team is very small. To give an example of just the email team, we send out about 260, 270, or whatever million emails a year, and one person does it. So that's, that's well, she has a designer who helps her. So it, we had a lot of outside vendors. What I felt when I first got there, and it's easy for a new person to come in and see these things, was that most of the vendors were on autopilot. We weren't able to give them the attention that they needed to stay on top of our business. So they kind of put us on autopilot and we weren't really getting 
the best out of our vendors. That was one of the first things that I noticed. But it is one of the first things we noticed about BlueCore. That was the difference. And, and we, even though we were only doing triggered emails with them, they gave us such good service, such good attention to detail on all of those um, smaller emails, if you will, and they were making a difference. So I will share lots of data with a vendor, you know, within reason. We are what they call an employee. We're an ESOP, we're an employee-owned um, company, so it's a little different. But we share as much data as I deem necessary for us to get the um, sort of the relationship off to a right start. If I deem that the relate, and I have changed a few vendors since I've been there. If I feel like we are still an autopilot after the 19 months that I've been there, those vendors are no longer working with us. Considering you oversee a number of channels, what role does email play within your overall marketing stack? Um, to tell you the truth, email plays a huge role in what we're doing. and. Um, it didn't play the same role in, in other prior companies that I have been at because I didn't feel everybody really understood how valuable email can be for you. Because people would, were looking at it, oh, it's just sort of a side thing, a little side communication with your customers. We take our email program and we use it to test an enormous amount of things. We are testing new products. We are testing promotions. We are testing pricing. We are testing creative treatments. We're testing every single thing. We often say, Tried an email, tried an email, tried an email first. And it's not exactly going to perform exactly the same because we are a huge catalog company. We send out 57 million catalogs a year, which is a lot. And we are the oldest catalog company out there. But we have learned so much by testing things in email that have helped all the departments. We've even taken, um, originally when Kira was just working alone, Carissa, who's sitting with her, was doing just Facebook. But what we were doing, which a lot of companies do, is we were operating in our silos. The print team was doing what they were doing. The online team was doing what they were doing. And there was a little, there's a little competition. I like a little healthy competition. Don't, don't think I don't. But I want employees to be in competition with themselves. I want my employees to compete with themselves and make their programs better. So email became a place where all the other departments, if you will, were learning now they're all like trying to get over to Kira. The merchandisers are constantly going over to Kira and say, try this product, try that product, try a segmented email here, try a batch email there. So I really feel it's elevated our entire group of much less silos and much more sort of collaboration with each other. On top of testing through email, is there any other approaches to email and the other marketing channels that you're currently engaged in? Well, we have been now saying, okay, there's particularly when we moved over to segmented, there's been, and I'll get to, our, you know, globally, I'll talk about our numbers later, but when we really got into segmenting our emails, it, we just saw our numbers change dramatically. And one thing that's maybe different than some of the businesses that you're all in is Hammock or Schlemmer, this is what we say about our product. We say our product is a mile wide and an inch deep. And you actually don't need our products. Our products are not commodities. Our products, we're not selling clothing. We sell some clothing, but we're not selling clothing that you have to have a new outfit every, every spring or fall. So you could forget about Hamaker or Schlumber because you don't really need our products. We think our products make your life easier, but they actually make your life easier for problems that you actually didn't know you had. So it's harder for us. It's harder for us when you might buy a side sleeper pillow one day, and then you come back six months later, and you buy an Iron Man robot. I mean, really? Our database is going to help us figure out what you're going to buy next? And that's, what we, that's really what we couldn't do ourselves internally. And that's where we said, OK, there's all this AI happening. We were just using it with our triggered. And we had a, an email service provider that I don't want to name their name, but I will name it later to you privately, that we, aren't, that we just switched off of. But we couldn't get them to sort of work with us to say, OK, we're not like everybody else. And I'm sure everybody thinks they're not like everybody else. And if you don't think you're like everybody else, push your vendor. Say you're not like everybody else and make, my, make me better. And that's what we said. We, we, there's, there's, I always say there's gold in them, their hills, when you work with Blue Corp. Because there's a hunt. I mean, I got our score today. It was only 21. I was like, Kira. We're only 21, how are we not 32? Again, be competitive with yourself, be competitive with your vendors. So we're using email now, we're using it with Facebook, we're using it to 
to give us more intelligence about our about our customer bands because our customers are so unique. The one thing we're not doing well, and I think it's our own fault and we just haven't gotten to it yet, we're not using a lot of this intelligence to help us with our catalog circulation. We are still in the world of everybody gets the same catalog, everybody doesn't get the same email. You know, I don't think everybody should, everybody's not getting the same treatment on Facebook, everybody's not getting the same treatment in Google. I want us to make sure that we're using this intelligence. We just haven't gotten there yet, but we will. How did you know you had a problem to fix within your marketing stack? Well, I wasn't I, when I got here, um, or there, I guess I should say. I, you know, you go back and you look at um, the data, and we saw that our our data was. Let's talk email for a second. Was very stagnant. It wasn't getting any worse. It wasn't getting any better. It was just sort of holding it on because that's what traditional email was was happening for a lot of companies and other companies I was at because you weren't really paying attention to it. You were just sending out emails. And then, actually, uh, luckily, and I can say it luckily now because it's over, Q1 of 2018, our sales really went down. I'm talking double digit down in email. Well, that's when senior management pays attention. That's when everybody pays attention. Well, really all they want to know is what are you going to do about it? And that's when we were able to say, OK, I was new, we had a couple of new people. We need to make a change. Obviously, what we're doing with our current email provider is not working, and for whatever reason, they're not as invested in us as we want them to be. They should, we were sharing data with them. They should have cared as much as we cared. And so we said, okay, we're doing these triggered emails with um, Blue Core. They're doing so well, but not well enough to make up the, for the deficit that we were seeing in the rest of our email program. So that's when we said, okay, we have to sort of sit with our, our Blue Core team and say, okay, what, what don't we know about what you can offer us? What, what, can, what more can happen with Blue Core that's not happening on the other side? On top of Blue Core, what options were you considering? And how did you come to the conclusion that Blue Core was the best tool for the job? So we did what you're supposed to do. And we interviewed, we did an RFP, and we interviewed lots of teams. We interviewed all the big email teams. We interviewed Salesforce. And I mean, really, why wouldn't you want to go with Salesforce? And we came this close to going with Salesforce because they offer a lot of other things as well. But then we said to ourselves, we are going to be sort of the little fish in the big pond. And we, we don't have enough staff members to get our job done. We have one person that does social, one person that does search, one person that does email. I needed a firm that would really hold our hands, if you will, and, and really treat us you know, with the attention that I know we deserve, but we, they probably had bigger clients that needed more attention to them. It's interesting to me because I always use the example, before I knew Nike was a client of Blue Car, I used to always say, like a Nike. If you have Nike, how are you going to pay attention to Hammock or Schlemmer? Well, then we find out Blue Car has Nike. So we said to ourselves, we want to be Nike. We want to be Hammock or Schlemmer at Blue Corps. And so that really is what it, what it did for us. We knew by all the conversations we were having, the way they were holding our hands, the way they gave us attention that a lot of our other vendors, they give it to you when you're doing the RFP, for sure. But I wanted it after that. I wanted it after when we actually signed on the dotted line. And even in the negotiating process, it was really just special. It's really only the word I can say. We really felt like we were getting the, we were already getting the attention we needed. We got the attention we needed on the triggered emails. So we knew we could get the attention. And we actually didn't do the full cutaway until June, but we started to use Blue Core. We actually started, we were paying two vendors for a couple of months because we wanted the transition to be as smooth as we could. You would have thought the other vendor would have stepped up and said, hey, what's going on here? Because we were actually using Blue Core Intelligence and then sending names over to the other provider to do some of our uh, segmented email. You think that they would have said, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to lose this business. They, they said it, but they said it a little too late. On top of the trigger program performing well for you, are you able to highlight any other key successes that have really stood out within your email program? Well, for us, we do. We, we've changed the way we do our emails totally because of our, our relationship with Blue Corps now. So we were sending out just a boatload of batch emails. And um, we actually send out emails seven days a week. We do four segmented emails. We do three batch emails. And then as the Q4 um, picks up, we 
um, we add more and more and more. Because we're very, you know, we have an older customer also, in case I didn't say that earlier. Our customer is, you know, late 60s, mid 60s, early 70s. And we are working feverishly on all our other channels to get a younger customer. Because Hamburger used to have a younger customer. I think we weren't smart. We probably aged with our customer instead of bringing in the fresh new customers as well. But I think that we have, we, we spend a lot of time testing. We're constantly testing our creative treatments. We're constantly, and, and it's easy to do it. So we're constantly testing every aspect of it to learn from it and to help the other channels learn as well. And really we're now creating campaigns. I mean, everybody calls everything campaigns, but we really are creating campaigns that you'll see in Facebook, you'll see in email, you'll see in search, you'll see even in direct mail, I'm doing direct mail pieces now, sort of one-off direct mail pieces based on the learnings that we're getting from, from email, which is really the way it should be, but it's not really the way it was in my experience in other places with email. How do you correlate your company goals into your Blue Core partnership? Well, we're pretty honest with our Blue Core team. To probably more honest than we are maybe with some of our other um, uh, vendors. I will say um, our, email, our email team, team of one and a half, are very competitive with themselves. And they're, they're not happy unless they're sending out emails. They do the same scoring system that they were doing this morning on, the, on this, where every Monday I get an email telling me the success of the emails for the week, and it's, everything is red, green, and, and yellow. And if they don't have enough green, I don't even have to have a conversation with them. They're already having a conversation with themselves. They're already in there explaining to me why something happened and how they're, how they're going to improve it. I think I lost the question. It's okay. I went crazy on that. No, that's okay. It's how do you, <laughs> Sorry. How do you correlate your company goals into your Blue Corp partner? Okay, so I think we all probably have the same corporate goals. In you know, the very basic, we need, we need more revenue and we need a bigger bottom line. So that's pretty much what I think everybody probably needs. But one thing that we were struggling with at Hammaker is getting traffic to our website. Again, the customer's older. We have wonderful customer service reps. Some of our customers get on the phone and, and they're like telling their life history because some of them are retired, so they have time to do that. And I'm all about, you know, come on, unless you're doing an upsell while you're on that phone with that person, let's get that, let's get that order and let's get that call cut short. So we really, it's all about getting more people to our website for all the right reasons. So it's cheaper than a phone call. They'll see more um, opportunity to buy other products. So everything that we do in email is all about, you know, get that open rate open, get that click-through rate, get that conversion rate. And we've seen it grow exponentially since we've made a lot of these new switches, to be honest. Right. What has Blue Core been able to deliver on that other vendors in the past have not? Well, I think... There, the audience segmentation has just been so powerful for us. We really, because of what I said earlier about our, our type of the type of product we sell, a, we're not a commodity, and you don't really buy multiples of what we sell. Then we see a little bit of in pain relief on that side of our business, but really not in in anything else. And we just didn't have the tools in house. We didn't have the knowledge. We didn't have the. We didn't have really our database wasn't strong enough. We weren't sharing all the. Omni data, we are now. There's a couple of new people in place, and so we're, but we couldn't wait for that. We couldn't wait for us to get our databases and our CRM up to speed. So the, really the audience segmentation, and really we just started using the smart promo. You know, the smart promo has been something that we learned about here last year. We raised our hand and said we would be part of the beta because we really are trying to take this legacy company and move it forward, and, and we are seeing that. And, um, their recommendations that they make to us, the, just in our back and forth with our reps, they almost, ever, almost everything they recommend has worked for us. And I just say it like that to all of you because we need to be a 171-year-old company and we can still be relevant and still make a difference. It really has come because, and I never would talk this way about a vendor before normally because you know everybody's in it for the money or whatever, but it is a little unique. That, that we get the attention that we get given the size of our business. And their recommendations are good. And we go back and forth, don't get me wrong, we're not pushovers at all. We'll go back and forth, but I will say they, they keep pushing. You gotta try this, you didn't try that, I told you to try this, you gotta try this. 
Here's why I want you to try that. Here's how easy it's gonna to be to try that. I'm gonna help set you up if you try that. All of that has sort of convinced us to do more and more and more. Still our score is only 21, gotta get that score up, but I still think that we are getting the attention that we need that we didn't get from other vendors. Gotcha. What made you so excited about smart promotions or campaigns, if you will, and how were you able to sell that internally? Well, Kira had to sell it to me. Let's, let's be honest, because when I first heard about it, I kept saying, what? What are they going to do? And then we were coming here last year, so we sat down, and we sort of had a private meeting about, and they really took us through, the developers took us through it, which was another thing. When do you get to sit down with the developer? The developer sat us down and showed us how it works. So we, um, and listen, for us again, we, we don't have enough intelligence in our own systems to know what you're gonna buy next when you bought two very odd items that don't connect. That's the hardest part. So how, how are we gonna know? And we didn't have, you know, we, didn't, we're not, we weren't tracking all the clicks on our site like we should have been. We weren't tracking, all, tracking a lot of our customer behavior like we should have been. And so we are now, and so by hearing about it, we said, okay, it can't hurt to try it. So we're only doing it one day a week. We're doing it on Wednesdays. We're doing it once a week. What I personally like about it, I mean, I love a lot of things about it, but I love the ability to deliver the email when that person normally opens up emails, as opposed to the 7 a.m. deployment, 9 a.m. deployment, whatever everybody seems to be doing. And I know we've done a lot of testing ourselves in time of day. And time of day is really when the customer tells you it's their time of day. And that's another benefit that we got from this. We didn't have to guess the time of day and say, well, this percentage does it at nine, this percentage does it at seven. And believe me, we were doing all that kind of testing as well. It really helped us. And I will say, as much as we love Smart Promo, we're only doing it one day a week. And I'll tell you why. Because we don't think it looks as good creatively as a lot of the emails we do ourselves. And that's actually on us. It's not on BlueCore. Because it's pulling the image directly from our site. But when our email designer gets our emails ready, he, he doctors up all the images and then kind of improves them for email. And we're very copy heavy. It's a hammocker thing. We're working on it. We're trying to pull back the copy a little bit, but we have some people that have been working there for many, many years and we're known for our copy. I wonder who's actually reading all of it. But so that's a negotiation that I'm working on, but I let the email team do whatever they want as long as their results are good and the results have been good. But I, do, I don't think the creative is that great. I think we have to now think more with our shots that we're shooting, because we're so catalog focused with our 57 million catalogs a year, that the, I'm, now I'm working on that team to shoot with an email in mind also, shoot with um, these smart promos in mind, which is nothing that, we didn't have to do that before. So now that's another layer I'm adding. Since the creative team reports to me, that's a good thing. Now they have to do that as well. And so I think as, the, as we think that creative is a little bit better, we'll probably roll it out a little more. Considering smart campaigns are new technology and a new model for your team, what made you decide to test it and trust it? Well, everything that we, we're, we're of the mind right now that, that um, we have to try new things at Hanover. Once we had the rest of the email program really running so well, and I'm telling you, we're seeing double-digit growths. We are so happy this year with our email that it's gonna be hard for her to beat it next year. That's the only thing I can tell you. It has been such a good year with email that um, now we're ready. We're ready to, and our partnership. I think it's a combination. Everything that they have suggested we do, and we took a chance and did it, I know it sounds ridiculous and they're not paying me on the side, it has been working. And to get things to work in Hamaker Schlemmer is not easy. Just because it's been around for so many years and we, even though we used to be on the forefront of everything, we, we didn't always change as fast as we should with, with new technology and with our systems and everything. But really we had such good luck with everything. We really listened to our team at Blue Corps. They listened to us that we said, okay, I and mean, listen, they would like us to roll it out more, more days, more, more options. It's us again, we're a little reluctant. So we're not doing everything they say, 
We're doing most of the things they say, but we're testing everything. But, but we already established the relationship with our team and the confidence in our team and, and the trust and respect that I think we're, we're open. And if I could say anything to all of you, and I don't know what phases of your blue core career you're in, take, you know, ch be open to change and be open to their suggestions because we've been very lucky. And, um, and we were a little reluctant, but the more and more we sort of open up the floodgates, we are seeing the success. Great. You hear Blue Core say all the time that the platform is user friendly, but be honest with me, does it really save your team time? What were the steps before Blue Core to set up a campaign? 100%. And the opening this morning, they were saying that their job is to make things simple and easy, and they do. They absolutely do. I see Kira shaking her head. The steps before were so complicated. Part of it was on us, because we have a we have a very old database that we're revamping, and we, we just instituted a new um, um, auto management system that was conflicting with our, our um, database. So we've, had a, we've been suffering from all those complications in the background. So don't think everything is smooth sailing. It is not. But that tool is simple, and it's powerful. And you can't ask for anything. Honest to God, I never. Kira uses the tool. So if you really want to know, I just ask her all the time, is it really simple? Because you sound like it's simple. If you really want to know how to use the tool, talk to Kira and Carissa later, because they will tell you, but they tell me all the time. There's so, there's so much more fleet. We could never get out the number of emails with a team of one and now a, one and a half and one designer. The number of emails that we're doing, I had a team of four or five at my last job with four or five designers, and we weren't getting out this many emails. So it's the combination of how fleet and powerful the program is, and really how fleet and powerful it's, it's enabled them to be. So I couldn't be happier, to tell you the truth, with that, with the, with the portal. Do you have any suggestions for others as they're evaluating their email program? Well, the first thing you have to do is hire somebody really good internally. We did that, check. So that's the number one thing, but I think that, um, when we did our RFP and we were meeting with all the other teams, trust me, when everybody met with us, everybody was great. Everybody was gonna do exactly what we needed them to do. But there was always, there was that nagging thing inside me that they weren't because we were gonna be too small. And I have been told by some very large vendors out there, and they're, they start with a G, have basically told me I don't spend enough money with them and that's why they pulled back the account execs uh, time with our team. And I don't get that with that other big company that starts with an FB. I get wonderful service from them. But I never, I never felt that experience, as I've said before, with, um, with the Blue Core team. But you have to trust your account reps because they will, they will guide you. And I'm always a little, you know, I've been around a long time. I'm always a little, really? You know, but then when you're in those meetings, it, it, is, it is, they live up to what they say. And don't be afraid to try new things really try new things. As we all know, I and mean, we've all learned this over our years of working, you only learn from failure, you only learn from testing things, you only learn from you know, trying some new things and making mistakes. But the most important thing is be, be open to change, even if you have to convince your senior management team. Because let's trust me, once you're successful, your senior management team leaves you alone. Once you're doing well, then they open up the floodgates, and when you bring them something screwy that you want to do, you go, well, if you weren't so successful, I'd probably say no to that idea. But since you're doing so well, why not? And we, we go back and forth all the time, uh, the email team and me, about what we're going to test or what we're going to try. But success obviously beats everything. And you, know, you run the appropriate tests. You run it so that you can read it. And um, we have seen, I can't tell you, you know, here's the thing. We're getting learnings on our customers. We're getting learnings on our product. We're getting learnings on our promotions. We're getting learnings on our creative, all from email. And most people never thought of email like that. Email, as I said earlier, was just a side business. We're getting all those kind of learnings, and, the, and we're bringing the teams together to get those learnings, and then we're sort of exploding it out into the other facets of our business. You mentioned being open to change, and as also as you mentioned, uh, Hammerker has been around for over 171 years and is America's longest running catalog company. How do you navigate those internal conversations with management to convince them to step outside the box of everything that you've been doing in the past into something new and different? 
I'm only smiling because it hasn't been easy. I'm just gonna be perfectly clear. We have a wonderful CEO, wonderful, but he's been there for 35 years. So he remembers Hamburger when, but um, the good thing about him is he's a data guy. So we throw data at him all the time. And as long as I use the T word, which is test, he's okay with everything. Oh yes, but he's been quite critical of our emails, hasn't he? He has sent me many a nasty gram, as I like to call it, when I wake up on a Sunday morning or something like that and I get an email about, um, it's not very hammocker-like. I don't know if you ever get those kinds of things and it depends on the kind of companies you work at. Oh, the hammocker customer wouldn't like that. Or the hammocker customer would never say that if he doesn't like our copy. Or the hammocker customer doesn't need promotions. Really? Doesn't everybody want a good deal? So that's my job, not their job. That my job is to get in front of him and it hasn't been easy. But as we saw success, he definitely, I think sometimes he's a little, has a little cringe every once in a while when he sees some of the creative that we've done because we've really tried some, some new things, even some things that we aren't gonna do again. That's the beauty of testing. But, um, and we're not finished, trust me. We are not finished convincing senior management that we need to do these things. But he's on all of our emails. Every once in a while we're a little sneaky and maybe we don't put him on an email that goes out just till we get the results. I'm coming clean. If you ever repeat that, I'll lie and say I never did that. But, um, but he is, um, he's a data guy and that's what is a good thing. So as long as we can prove it to him and we have, we've proved it to him in multiple times in email. And I knew we had reached success when he said to me a couple of weeks ago, can you translate any of those successes that you're getting in email over to other parts of the business, Amory? So I knew he was going to be off email and find something else to talk to me about. That's okay. But um, it is helping me because he's very strict about what our creative can look like. Very strict. And, the, and if you've ever seen the catalog, you will agree. We've been looking the same for a very long time. I'm working on that, just so you know. I just haven't gotten in there yet. But the creative we've been able to test in email and he's printed out many of these emails and put them on my desk and written all over them and told me that's, that's not the Hamaker customer. And I take a deep breath and thank God we do tests and then I show him the results and it's okay. So I am moving over to this. I, I feel like we're in a, we're a cruise ship that's docked. It's not even on the water. It's docked that we're trying to move. But um, we're having fun doing it. I will say that we're enjoying ourselves because you know who doesn't enjoy success? But we have a lot of work to do in the other parts of the business. And I know that this learning and this collaboration with, with um, our partner here, that's what I'm translating also, which has nothing to do with email. But I often say to vendors now, I used to say, oh, we work differently with our other vendors. Now I just say Blue Core, that Blue Core wouldn't treat us like that or Blue Core wouldn't do that with us. And so now vendors don't like to be compared to other vendors. So I feel like we're getting, uh, it's, it's going out exponentially in a good way. Great, thank you so much, Anne-Marie. You're welcome.